Hello and welcome to our service which celebrates the Festival of Christ the King, traditionally held on the last day of the liturgical year, the Sunday before Advent begins. The Bible reminds us, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is coming. And from next week, as we begin in Advent to look for the coming of our King, uh, we will start to think about what that means, what it looks like to wait in expectation of the coming of the kingdom. But today we celebrate that King and the kingdom that is uh, governed by him. Faithful one whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise inspire our prayer and shape our lives for the kingdom of your son Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we're going to sing together our first uh, hymn which is King of Kings, Majesty. King of Kings, Majesty God of heaven living in me, gentle Savior, closest friend, strong deliverer, beginning and end, all within me falls at your throne, your majesty. to mind those things that we've done or we shouldn't have done or we forgot to do and we invite the Holy Spirit to bring those to our consciousness things which God already knows but that we need to repent of turn away from so let's take a moment where we might pause and reflect on the week gone past Jesus says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. O King enthroned on high, filling the earth with your glory, holy is your name, Lord God Almighty. In our sinfulness we cry to you, 
to take our guilt away and to cleanse our lips to speak your word through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we have our reading which Jill is going to read for us today. This morning's reading is taken from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 25 beginning at verse 31 and reading to the end. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his throne in heavenly glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? Or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in? Or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? And the king will reply, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you didn't invite me in. I needed clothes and you didn't clothe me. I was sick and in prison and you didn't look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and didn't help you? He will reply, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our reading today has got two themes that I want to pull out from it. The first is the idea of power and vulnerability. And the second is the idea of action and consequence. Power and vulnerability. We celebrate Jesus as King. Now, any of you who are watching Netflix or like to watch programmes about monarchy uh, might think of kingship or queenship as something that is about power, is about people respecting, standing in awe, about going first, about having the best about being lavished with riches. That's the traditional idea of monarchy, distant, above the subjects. However, um, when the Princess Diana joined the royal family, she really challenged that image. She was willing to show her vulnerability. She was willing to be different from those that had gone before her. Uh, we see that particularly in the way that she uh, wanted to bring up her children and in the things that she chose to do, the charities that she chose. Uh, for example, she went to the AIDS Foundation, is one of the first people who publicly shook hands with somebody who was um, HIV positive. These days, we wouldn't find that a strange thing, but at the time, it was revolutionary. Diana, by her vulnerability, changed the monarchy. Some of you might think that was for good and some for ill. 
but she showed us that there is a way of being with people that is not just about being all powerful. Now, I'm not pointing the finger at our queen. She is a woman of deep faith and I am sure service and gratitude for that faith. But we need to think differently, a, a different kind of monarch when we think about Christ the King. Christ the King is ruler of all, but he does not rule with that kind of force and power that people expected him to have. Indeed, many didn't re recognise him as the Messiah because they expected him to charge in with an enormous army. And as we know, he did quite the opposite. What he did was model uh, the values of the kingdom of heaven. His kingdom is one where the poor are raised up and looked after, where the oppressed are set free, where the sick are healed, where we love our enemies as well as those that are part of our family or our close friendships, where we put ourselves out for other people. Those are some of the values of the kingdom which our king serves. And service is absolutely what it is about. There's the song isn't there about the servant king. It came to earth in a lowly way and ended up riding onto Jerusalem, into Jerusalem on a donkey and giving up himself on the cross for us. One of the things about this passage is that we are told that if we want to show that we put Jesus first, then we need to exhibit characteristics of him, the kingdom values. And it's not just about what comes next when we die. Uh, if you're good now, if you believe in Jesus now, because that's fundamental, then you will get into the kingdom of heaven. And it's all about what happens next, although it is about that. It's also about the fact that if we live our lives now according to the values of the kingdom, they will be better. And not only our own lives will be better, but the lives of the people around us will be better. We are the agents, the ushers in of the kingdom. We demonstrate or should demonstrate what it is to know Jesus Christ. And as we are changed and conformed to his likeness, as we put him first in our lives, then more and more the world around us begins to change. It's not just about the kingdom next, it's about the kingdom now, here, in this moment. So my question to you, particularly today, is how are you bringing in the values of the kingdom where you are? It's not ever so easy, locked down in your home, but this time round, many of us are still getting out. It might be about the way you conduct yourself in the supermarket, how you are as a driver. Are you generous? Do you sit back and let others go in front of you? Or do you run the red light, put your foot on the accelerator? Do you make sure that you're in front of the person um, rather than they get in front of you? And those are quite superficial things. What do you do with your money? Are you storing up riches for yourself? Or are you willing to share it and give it generously with others? What are you doing with your time? Are you willing to use it for people that perhaps you don't know, or maybe even you're not so fond of? Uh, that's the big challenge to us. Most of us can love our neighbour when they're our friends. But when our neighbour is a challenge, when they seem to be people that we perhaps wouldn't normally like, then it's much, much harder to love them. And as part of that mix, also, we have something to teach the world about caring for ourselves. That's not about being selfish. It's not necessarily about putting yourself above everybody else. It's making sure that as an agent of the kingdom, as a minister of the faith, which you share with me in, it's about being prepared and ready and fit and healthy to do that. Good sleep, good space, good head time in order to get your own things in order. All of these things begin to be demonstrations of the kingdom of God here on earth. So how are you living that? 
what are you doing? I'm sure those of you locked down are praying. I hope you are praying and learning about what more you can do. Those of you who are locked down and, and people who can go online, uh, you have a degree of influence. You can challenge things that uh, are behaviours that are outside of our kingdom values. Uh, you have the opportunity to write, write, fill in petitions, to, to challenge the structures and powers in our society. And when you do that, you have to think about, is your behaviour becoming of one who is an ambassador, a subject of Christ? Now, it was really important to the people reading this passage at the time that they were able to identify with Jesus as their king and ruler rather than the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire was oppressive of them. The Roman Empire was often cruel and took no account of the teachings of, um, of God, the God who the Jewish people worship, but also the same God who is ours now as we see Jesus as the fulfillment of Isaiah's prophecy. He is the one who came, the Messiah. But they nearly missed him because they didn't recognise his leadership, his sovereignty. So is Jesus sovereign over your daily living? And before we conclude, I just want to make sure that we look at the other element of this passage. It tells us that there is judgment. There is a time when we will be called to account for our lives, the way that we've lived. Now, I don't believe that there's a God on a cloud um, counting us into the pearly gates and that some of us are going one way and some of us are going the other in a, in a kind of a flippant judgment I think this is a judgment of our long lives and it's one that God makes and I don't always know uh, how he will make that, neither do you. But what I can be sure of is that those of us who say yes to Jesus and learn more about what it is to be like him and live it out in our lives will be counted amongst the sheep. Why the sheep? Well, the sheep roved far out they were stronger than the goats. They could go way away on the hillside and get themselves into places um, that the, the goats couldn't go. The goats had to be kept close by. It was hard to tell the difference. And that's what's really important. Uh, those who say, yes, I believe. Those who say, yes, I follow God. Those who say, yes, I go to church on a Sunday or I always watch the morning prayer on the telly or whatever. That's all well and good. But is there a demonstration in your life? Sheep and goats, as I say, look similar. But when it comes down to it, the one goes nowhere, bears no fruit, does nothing, has to be uh, looked after and close, stays close by. But the sheep go out. This lockdown has forced us to be scattered like the sheep, living out amongst the people wherever we go. There is judgment and you have the opportunity right now to make it right with God if you haven't already. All you need to do is to say, yes, I believe. All you need to do is to recognise the things that you've done wrong in your life. And you just need to ask Jesus Christ to come and enter into your life. You could do it right now if you haven't done it before. You could do it again. And then as you go from here, take account of what it is that you're doing and how you're living your life, how you portray the kingdom and the king that you rule. Have a really good week, but be self-aware too. Watch what others see in you and see whether you are an ambassador of Christ or a follower of someone else. Amen. And now Ian is going to lead us in our prayers. To the words, Lord of the rainbow, please respond, hear our prayer. Lord, after the flood, you put your rainbow in the skies to remind us of the promises you made to your people. Now we claim those promises as we pray to you. Lord of the rainbow, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Green, the colour of creation. There's so much green, Lord, and so much beauty in our world. Help us to stop, look and listen to your creation. 
the amazing world of plants and the canopy of the trees, the peace of green fields and the thunder of the seas. And yet daily we're destroying your world and abusing our privilege as stewards of creation. May we turn again and love, honour and conserve what you have graciously given. Lord of the rainbow, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Yellow, the colour of the sun, of warmth and light, and so the colour of smiles and love and friendship. Thank you, Father, for the delight we have in family, friends and special communities. Thank you in particular for our special people, who we think of quietly now. We pray for those who have few friends, whose loneliness is a daily burden, and for those who seem unable to make or keep the friendships that are so life-giving to others. Lord of the Rainbow, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Red, the colour of blood, the blood of martyrs and saints who gave their lives for the faith we hold so very lightly. We pray for the church that nurtured both them and us. Give to your church in every culture and nation the courage to be different, to speak the truth and live the life that draws others to Jesus Christ. Especially we pray for this church and our neighbouring churches, that we may be beacons of light in this community. Lord of the Rainbow, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Blue the colour of the United Nations flag, the colour now associated with the NHS and the colour of the warning lights of our emergency services. Help the United Nations to change the world for good and to promote justice and honesty and peace. Help the NHS to support us and for all of us to support our NHS workers. Help our emergency services to support us and for us to support all emergency services vehicles. Lord of the Rainbow, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Green for creation and yellow for warm relationships. Red for the blood of the martyrs and blue for our caring organisations and there's orange for the sweet fruits of the earth, and indigo for the colour of shadows, and violet for the colour of sorrow. Lord God, you surround us with so much colour, and the colours of the rainbow combined in the white light of your dazzling presence. So take the prayers we've offered, together with the promises you've given us, and bring all creation to the fulfilment of your kingdom, where prayers and promises in are no more, for Christ is all in all. Lord of the rainbow, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. A collect for this Christ the King, God the Father, help us to hear the call of Christ the King and to follow his service, whose kingdom has no end. For he reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, one in glory. Amen. Now we join together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And we sing together now our second hymn, perhaps more traditional and better known to some of you, Crown Him With Many Crowns. Of him who died for thee 
of your faithful people, that they, plenteously bringing forth the fruit of good works, may by you be plenteously rewarded. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may Christ the King make you faithful and strong to do his will, that you may reign with him in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you today and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>